Hello everyone, what's going on? I'm Gav from Aston 974 back again today doing another Valve Hammer tutorial and this time around I'm going to talk about logic gates. Now, there's a couple of things I need to say about this immediately. Uh, what I'm going to be demonstrating is effectively the middle of an input and output chain. So for example, you can have a button and you'd want it to open the door. And you can use essentially a logic gate and obviously there could be situations where you have multiple buttons and other sort of situations like light switches turning on lights, which I'll get onto a little later. So for the logic gate part, it's only going to be a logic branch input over here, then a logic branch listener entity in the middle and one logic branch as an output. So really, the outputs on the button here and the outputs on the logic branch are really down to you. Um, so it's only going to cover the middle section here. Now you'll notice text as well. This is because I'm using Hammer Plus Plus. This wouldn't work in the Hammer editor. So yeah, I've done the text in such a way that I hope it aids with the visualization of what's going on so you can understand what's happening. And another thing you need to know about this sort of logic gate setup is that it uses Boolean algebra. So zero equals false, one equals true. So if you hear, for example, on all false, then that's if every input is zero. On all true is when every input value is one. And then output of zero means false, output of one equals true. So there's going to be some parallels with stuff like programming as well. So let's just get right into it with a logic gate that I wasn't actually going to cover the repeater gate. So this is fairly straightforward. It takes a logic branch input and you can give it whatever name, whatever value you want. I'm just going to have to move my properties down to the corner over here and probably blow that up later. I don't know. And in the middle, we have a logic branch listener entity, as I said. A repeater gate only takes one logic branch as an input. And essentially on all false, if the input is zero, then we output zero to the logic branch on the right. And on all true, we output a value of one. So that goes into this output over here. And so it seems a little redundant to do it. I mean, you could always just add all the outputs you want onto the button, onto the right, onto the left here, sorry, not onto the right. Um, or you can make it go into like a logic relay or logic branch if you really want to. However, at uh, least according to the Valve Developer Wiki, there's issues with logic branch entities, uh, especially when dealing with Portal 2 for whatever reason. So in case dealing with just one logic branch or a logic branch listener causes you issues, then you can use a repeater gate. Yes, it wastes two, maybe three entities, but it fixes the glitches and crashes that you'll experience if you just use a logic branch or a logic branch listener combination. So that's pretty much all I have to say there. And uh, did you know that there's actually a Zen Skybox inside of a portal? Yeah, some people might not know that. Okay, let's go on to some of the logic gates I did want to cover in this video. So we have the AND gate. Now the AND gate is fairly straightforward. If I just focus on the properties of the logic branch listener, then what we say is on all false, we output zero. On all true, we output one, and on mixed, we output zero. So this will be useful in, say, a portal map, and you have multiple buttons to open the door. You want every button to be activated for the door to open. So that would use an AND gate. So a button would go into a logic branch, and then you, you know, on open, for example, you would set the value to one, on close, zero, and every logic branch has to have a value of one for the output to trigger, which in this case would be the door opening. And you just have the number of buttons or logic branch entities in this case as logic branches in our logic branch listener and the outputs are what I've just stated. So we move on to the OR gate next. And this one is also fairly straightforward. Um, it's essentially the same as the AND gate. So on all false is an output of zero. On all true, we have an output of one, but on mixed, we have an output of one as well. So basically in this situation, it doesn't matter if one or more or all of the inputs are valid. I know or all is a little like, you know, difficult to say and understand, I guess, from especially when I say it. 
But yeah, it doesn't really matter. Any one input can be true to allow an output to be fired. So I don't know if you want to deactivate a shield and there's three input sources, then it doesn't matter which tower you go to to deactivate the shield. As long as one of the towers gets deactivated, then the shield goes down, something like that. And it's worth noting as well that for the AND gate and the OR gate, it's an example of a multi-input situation. So you can have two, three, four, five, ten, twenty 10, 20 inputs. Um, the logic still remains the same. So I just thought I'd point that out because some of the logic gates I'm going to cover are only single input or duo input. So we'll get onto the duo inputs later. But we have the NOT gate next, and the NOT gate is pretty much the exact opposite of the repeater gate. You take the input value and you reverse it, and that goes to the output. So on all false, you output 1, and on all true, you output 0. So I don't know of any situations where this would be useful, but essentially you take a logic branch and you reverse its numbers and then just output that to a different logic branch. So 0 becomes 1, and then 1 becomes 0 pretty straightforward and that's only one input if I didn't mention that already. Next up we have the NAND gate so it's essentially a combination of the NOT and AND gates. In this context we have on all false which you, you know you output a value of one because of the NOT condition uh, but this time on mixed gives an output of one as well and on all true equals zero. So that's pretty much the NAND gate. Again, I don't know of any situations where this is useful. Maybe the tower situation I mentioned before, but then, you know, that's whatever it's going to be. So it depends on the number of inputs. And if all of the inputs are true, then you output false. And even if one of the inputs goes down, then outputs are triggered. So that's pretty much what happened with the NAND gate. And moving on to the NOR gate, it is essentially a combination of the NOT and OR gates, except this time on all false gives an output of 1, on all true equals 0, and on mixed outputs 0 as well. So in this case, it would probably be with the tower situation I just mentioned, you have to deactivate all of the towers for outputs to fire. So yeah, essentially only outputs true when all of the inputs are false. So that's that situation. Now we can move on to the XOR gate. This is going to be a little interesting. It only takes two inputs. And essentially on all false, we output zero. On all true, we output zero. But on mixed, we output one. So I remember hearing about the XOR gate when hearing about generation one Pokemon sprite decompression. And there's a lot of XORing of binary strings. So essentially it's zero if they are identical and one if they're not identical. So if you have a zero and a zero and you do an XOR operation, then you get zero. If you have a one and a one and you do an XOR operation, you get a zero. But if you have a one or a zero or a zero or a one, then you output one because the two values are different. So that's pretty much what the XOR gate is. If they're the same then it's false, you know, output zero. But if they're different, they output true. So that's what is being illustrated here. And the example given is, for example, light switches. If you only have two light switches to turn a light on or off, it doesn't matter which light switch you use, the state of the light is going to change. So, you know, it doesn't matter which button you press, the lights are either going to turn on or off. So that'll be an example of using an XOR gate. And then you get the XNOR gate, which is pretty much the exact opposite. On all false outputs, true. On all true outputs, true. But on mixed outputs, zero. So whereas with the XOR gate, it was only when they were different, they output true. In this case, it outputs true if they're exactly the same. So if they're both false or they're both true, it outputs true. And if they're different, it outputs false. So that's pretty much everything I have to say about logic gates. Uh, hopefully I've explained it well enough for you to understand and hopefully the presentation's been acceptable and 
yeah, I just wanted to get this video done. Let me know what you think. Hopefully you find it helpful or if you have any examples, better examples of what I provide at least. And I guess I'll just have to love you and leave you and say thank you for watching and see you for the next video. Take care out there.